It says, it's your site tonight. Um, so we got to open up with a Rav Levi Yitzhak song, Nigan, but also some stories. So Favre, just open up your hearts. Hashem Chavra, we could all check out the the rest of the niggin in the description below. I'm sorry, Samson. We, I know we all want to play for a million hours, but we have some Chavra. I don't know if I want it for a million hours um, right now. Um, so yeah, Chavra, it's been a wild ride. We're officially officially entering into the rain season. We're officially entering the school season, the the driving in the West Bank season, the whole thing, he's quoted this, the whole thing. And it's been a crazy ride through the summer. I mean, I, I would never think in a million years that we would you know, be able to do it, but Hashem works in crazy ways and he gives us the strength to come on um, each and every day. He gives the motivation, the desire to learn some Torah together and learn some Torah period and connect with him. So I just want to thank Hashem for that. Like a little Chaim um, on like imaginary water um, for Hashem. Like thank you for giving us that strength. And like now, hopefully um, we could have a little bit more of consistency with time and, and so on. It's a very special night tonight. But before we get into it, just a little tefillah B'Shem Kol Yisrael. For the health for Pesach Rubi and Bidim Safasar, Bracha Basia Hudis, Yona Bas Basia, Miram Doni Baschana Yuchavan, all the names Bashim Kwaisra. A cry from the depths, says Rav Nassim. Master of the world, you compassionately hear the cry of your nation, the Jewish people. Have mercy on me and help me. Put it in my sincerity until you answer me. Let me cry out until you say, Here I am. Make, may my cry become even stronger. And let me give you no peace until you take pity on me and hear my voice. Listen to my cry and have compassion on me. Help me reveal, illuminate, and give birth to the radiant light of holy wisdom and inspiration that is now so deeply concealed for me because of my sins. There is more to the tefillah. The shame we We're all. We're getting through it. Um, Just moments ago, we listened to one of the deepest niggins in our world, the Berdish of her niggin. Rav Levi Yesach, the new Safasara. I get the name right? Oh, Tati. Mamish, when you need help, you call out. You call out. So just a couple of stories for those who aren't really familiar with the Tzaddik. The Tzaddik was called the Compassionate One. He was called the defender of Am Yisrael, defender of Israel. And I recommend this book. It caught my eye um, when I was at Pomerantz the other day. And I didn't know that it was his yurt site tonight, but Hashem works in crazy ways, like we all know. And now I'm able to share with you a couple of stories from Levi Yitzhak. So there's a little story of... Levi Yitzhak noticed a man running into the street. 
And he asked him, Davy, Rabbi Yid, what are you running after? And the man replied, I'm running to make a living. Rav Levi Yisak responded to that Yid, Dear Rabbi Yid, who is to say your livelihood is in front of you? And you must chase after it. Perhaps it is behind you and you are running away from it. We just never know. We always have to have that awareness, that 360 awareness. I think that's like the new uh, nickname for the Lakers' big three, LeBron, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook. They're called 360. Anthony Davis is the number three. LeBron is six. Westbrook is zero. So you have, we have to have 360 vision. Allow me to see what I can't see. Or of John Seidel, I don't know where he's been for a while. Um, he's here. He's probably watching the YouTube videos. But he revealed to us the deepest secret of that, uh, of that bracha. So another story from Rav Yisak, and we could go into Rav Nachman. By the way, this is the Kavit Shabbos, B'Shim Kleistra, L'Shim Shemayim Mamish. For everyone who wants to be here, for everyone who uh, doesn't know about this, this is for them. Another story from Rav Yisak. His whole life, Rav Levi Yisak of Berdichev, awaited the coming of Mashiach. It happened that tonight, terms of engagement were written for Rav Levi Yisak's granddaughter. Rav Levi Yisak examined the document. He read it, tore it up, and then he shouted, You don't believe in the coming of Mashiach? You wrote that during this year you will be living in exile. Rav Levi Yisak ordered that the following be added to the document. The wedding will take place in Mimir Hashem with good fortune in Jerusalem, the holy city. If God forbid the righteous Mashiach does not come this year, the wedding will be held in Berdichev. What, what a story. Gewalt. Mama should always think about Mashiach like Samson Schiff. So now we're going to learn a little bit about Mashiach in the eyes of Nachman. And this Torah opened up to it. And it's exactly what I was sort of struggling with over the past couple of days. So we'll see what Rav Nachman is trying to tell us here. David, you good? You hear us? Okay. Or the connection is crazy? All good. We hear you. Davey, how deep We're is Rav Levi Yitzchak? How, how deep is Rav Levi Yitzchak? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm just focused on not dying, bro. Leo, listen, though. Leo, listen, though. Gewalt. Amazing. The real meaning of peace is to join two opposites. Don't you know? Don't you know? Sorry, I have to. What Levi Yitzchak would say right now? The British would say to something like that? Say, Gewalt, look how great the Jewish... They don't... They want to live. They want to go and serve another day. Everyone knows or this the, is the or, the, the, the or, words are, such words are amazing. Hashem, look what they're doing. And even while they're focused on the road in the West Bank, they're on a Zoom. Unbelievable. Amazing. Unbelievable. You should therefore not be perturbed when you encounter someone who is and thinks the exact opposite of yourself. Don't assume you will never be able to live amicably with him. Likewise, when you see two people who are completely opposite types, don't decide that it is impossible to make peace between them. Chavra chas v'shalom should happen to none of us. Rather, we should be uh, having the eyes of the Bredishavar, right? Where exactly what Moshe was saying before, like Gavalt, like look at these Yidin. Right? They want to live another day. They're focusing on the road. And even more so, they're on the Zoom. Right? Like always finding the good in other people. Right? And we could always do that with people, even if they think the complete opposite. Right? The Chassid Shami of a Jew who thinks, you know, a, a, another way than you do, a, another uh, has another perspective. Right? I'm talking to myself right now. Right? Instead of arguing, you love. And with love, you find the good in that person. You're like, Gavalt, look at this person. Look at this Jew, Hashem. 
Chilak el mamish. Right? We learned them in Barishi. Literally, this week, that God breathed in a living soul in, in us. So we're all godly. So the more we could find this, we could end up knowing, ultimately knowing, that we could live with these type of people. Quite the contrary. Perfect peace is achieved through the effort to make peace between two opposites. Just as God makes peace in his high places between fire and water, which are two opposites, peace is attained when you are completely willing to sacrifice yourself to, the sancti to sanctify God's name. Kavra, the more we could be aware of this, the more we can do this, right? If someone's externally different than you, someone's internally different than you. We always look to make peace. We always look to, to look for the good points. Even if it means turning to Rebona Shalom and literally like reinforcing in yourself, Hashem, look at this. Because sometimes if we don't do that, we could get lost in the sauce. But now that we're saying it out loud to the Rebona Shalom, oh my gosh, so good. Now I'm rambling. Anyone have anything to say, questions, comments, please feel free. But Mir Hashem, through this perspective, through these eyes, we could bring Mashiach. Um, much closer, and we don't even have to write it on the on the little document, you know, for for engagement. Ramesh will be there. We'll be there. I'm sorry, it was like a little out of sorts tonight. Um, but Bizrat Hashem, we're here. It's the Kavit Shabbos Thursday night at 11:01 p.m., and we're still here. I mean, it's just unbelievable, unbelievable. You know, just a side point before, you know, as Samson's already unmuted, Gavalt. You know, I was talking about my friends before in the car. We we're talking about like the, the state of being in, in, in a secular college or just college in general and how, you know, one can continue or, or just ascend to, to new levels outside of Yeshiva and Sarah because it would seem like just unattainable. Like how, how can people, it's really the Chavra. We decide that's the Chavra. You know, and the, and the Tivo Chalam agrees with us. And Tivo Chalam says that, you know, people are bonfires. And in order to continue the bonfire, you need to surround yourself with other bonfires. Right? So, Yemir Tzashem, I give us all the bracha to you and I that we can continue to surround ourselves with amazing people, with very special people. So, our bonfires can continue to grow larger and larger. Obviously, not... Uh, you know, we're not, hopefully we're not damaging things with our with our fires, but we're at the Shem. It says in Shir Shirim. Samchuni ba ashishos, Radfuni ba tapuchim, ki cholos ahava ani. Literally translates to um, sustain me with cakes uh, and awaken me or keep me, um, give me alacrity or allow me to be uh, energized through apples. Um, for I am I am lovesick for you. So says Hashem to to the Jewish people. Well, we so say we to a Jewish the Jewish to Hashem. You might ask me, well, what does that have to do with Bereshit, and what exactly does that have to do with what we learned today? But you see, it's all a metaphor. But it's also not a metaphor. We also want to be sustained through cakes and through apples. Because in, in truth, scientifically, if you eat an apple, you'll probably be awake for longer. It's just uh, the way of the world. Um, but Hashem says, that, uh, we say to Hashem, keep me alive through cakes. Sustain me through the sweetness of life, the sweetness of creation. The sweetness of that, that breath that you breathed into me. For it's so sweet. We say to Hashem, keep that breath going. Don't only keep it going, but but radfuni batapuchim. 
Radfuni literally means chase after me. To chase out, but don't only just keep me alive. It's not enough. It is enough to be allowed, Kival. But as our friend had just logged off, he was came on just to be alive, you know. And give out, and he should. Why? Why? What's the point? Ki cholat ahava ani, because I am lovesick. You should just know that this is a deep sword in creation. That's all. Amen. Uh, Maya, Jeremy, do you have anything to share? Or, uh, indescribable. Indescribable is just as good as anything else. <clears throat> indescribable. Um, wow. Baruch Hashem. Chavra. The Kavit Shabbos Kodesh, 59 days until Hanukkah, one until Shabbos. Now we started the countdown to Hanukkah officially at 105. Now we're here. Now we're here. Give out. So I wish you guys nothing but health, happiness, and success. Bashim Kloistra. You guys should uh, just prepare more and more for Shabbos. Mirza Hashem could receive more and more light from Shabbos. And, um, Ever be well, be well, not much. Shkach, Jack, Thank Jeremy, you. you're the best. You're the best. And hopefully next week, starting on Sunday, we can return to normalcy. We can return to normal time. We'll be consistent. None of these bits, 11, you know, 10 30, 2 30 in the morning. Be consistent. So, Bezrat Hashem, Chavar, be well.